Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve this puzzle from the Sudoku Grand Prix by using naked pairs. Not only will I show you how to find the naked pairs and what they are, but also when you should and should not mark them in a puzzle. But before we get to solving, please indulge me for just a few seconds to recognize some special members of the Smarty Party community. First, I want to welcome new Smarty Party members, Tommy Dub and Aaron Wells. Thank you so much for your support. I do invest my support back into this channel. I'm currently raising money to go to VidSummit. It's an amazing YouTube conference where I hope to learn more tricks of trade in order to give you better content. Second, a big shout out to Yoshi Broshi for giving me the correct solution for the August Reward Puzzle Pack by Florian Wortman. Great job, Yoshi. I just released a solutions video to my Smarty Party members to show you how to get the correct solutions to every puzzle. Thank you so much, Florian, for this amazing pack. My next reward pack for members only is coming out September 1st, and it's called Sudoku Skyscrapers Conquer the Puzzling Heights. And it's by me. Yeah, that's right. I created my very first puzzle pack, and it features, you guessed it, skyscrapers. I want to thank Pietato for testing it out for me. You want to get this pack? Join the Smarty Party by clicking on the membership link in the description below or the pinned comment. Do it now. And speaking of now, we can turn our attention back to naked pairs. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. First thing you should notice, you have a lot of filled in digits here with some similar cells that see the, the remaining cells here in block one. And the same thing is going on down here in block nine. So what can we do solve wise? Well, we can use the fact that we have a one here and these two ones to solve this one right here. It's the only place left for a one in block two. And then if I look at the twos, there's only one place left for a two here, block two as well. Okay. And now, if you see how these two eights play in to block one, it leaves only one place left for an eight here in block one. And now with the six coming up and seeing all these cells, you can solve for six right here. And now that just leaves us with a naked pair. It's going to be a five or a nine. That's the only two left. In this case, since I already see the five right away, I don't need to make a mark. I'm just going to put the five right there and put the nine right there. Okay. After doing that, since we just solved quite a few cells, we can actually make some more solves in this puzzle. We can look and see, you know, we follow these eights down. You got an eight here and here and the eight in column five. So there's only one place for an eight in block eight. And then with these fives, you got two fives here and this five, the only one place for a five is right there. Uh, the nine, since we solve a couple of nines here, we got all four of these nines. Whenever you have four of a candidate looking into a block, you know you can solve it right away. There's only going to be one place left for that candidate. And then the sevens. We got these two sevens with this seven. We can solve for seven right here. So we're making a lot of great progress here. Now, in this case, I want you to kind of notice something. What can be in this cell right here? You know, you got a one, two, five, six, nine in the block. And then you have a seven and eight looking at it. So that's seven candidates looking at this cell right here. So the only thing remaining is a three, four. If you look at this cell, you still have that one, two, five, six, nine, but you may also notice the seven and eight see this cell as well. So this is a three, four. So this is a naked pair. And I'll highlight that. So in this case, I will highlight and I will mark both of these because I can't solve them right away. And then you also notice that there's only two candidates remaining here in row three. So that's also a naked pair. And so in this situation, if I can't fill out the rest of the block right away, I will fill in that naked pair. And if I have, the other time I will do it is if they're in, the pair is in two separate blocks. So, so here in block two and in block three, I will fill out that naked pair as well. And this is going to create restrictions within the block because now I know uh, that the three and the four are the only candidates that can go in these two cells. So that's what makes them a naked pair versus a hidden pair, which is where the 
canids are restricted to certain cells. In this case, the cells are restricted to two canids. We only have a 7 and 8 remaining, so we know we can mark this for a 7, 8, and that would be an, also another naked pair. I'll remove the marks here, and I want to show you, you know, this is what I would, a situation where I would make those marks. And now these 7 and 8s, uh, leading up to the next powerful thing about naked pairs you should be aware of, and that is if they can act as pointing pairs and claiming pairs. So since the 7s are in the same column, and you know the 7 has to be somewhere here in block 2 in column 6, a 7 can't be anywhere else along column 6. So you can't have a 7 anywhere else along column 6. You have this 7 here, and you have this 7 coming across row 8. Now we can solve this cell for a 7 here in block 8. All right, so we use this naked pair as a pointing pair, and we're able to make a solve. Nice. And now with these two 7s and these two 7s, we can solve for a 7 down here in block 7. Okay. Uh, and now to a point where you need a little bit, uh, another little strategy here that's going to be worthwhile. All right, so you got this two. Notice how this two comes down, column seven. And so it leaves two possibilities for two here in block nine. So I'll mark that. I'll use Snyder notation. Anytime a three by three block, you only have two possibilities for a candidate, mark it. And then if you solve one of these cells, you can solve the other one right away for that candidate. But this, these twos, also act as a pointing pair because they're in row seven and they're restricted to row seven here in block nine. That means twos can't be anywhere else along row seven. So you have these twos here, you have this two here, and you got this two already in column two. So now we can actually solve for two down here in block seven. We can use that pointing pair. And you know you need to notice this if you wanna make this solve. If you're just not familiar with these terms, naked pair, hidden pair, pointing pair, check out in the description below and get the link for my free Sudoku solving guide. You can download that. I teach you the top seven strategies and you will solve Sudokus like this from the Grand Prix even better. In fact, you'll solve over 80% of the Sudokus you see using those top strategies and it's all free. All right, after doing the pointing pair of twos, we can look down here at this cell. What can be in this cell? Well, it can't be a one or a two. It could be a three, it could be a four, but it can't be a five, and it can't be a six, seven, eight, or nine. So this is a three, four. And so now what you see here is we have another use of the naked pair. So now the three, four goes with this cell, it goes with this cell, and this three, four actually matches this cell. So in the row, in the block, in the column, pretty cool. But what it does for us is when you have a pair like this, it restricts those the cells even further. So now there's only two remaining cells we've got to try to figure out, and they can only be a six or a nine. Well, I have a six right here, so I know I can solve this cell for the six and that cell for the nine. So that's another good use of a naked pair. So outside the block, it helps restrict the column, and it's going to help me do some more solves. Nice. And now with these two nines and this nine, we can solve for nine here. And then with this nine, we can solve for nine right here. Nice, and we got all the nines. Now we can also do the same with the sixes. We got these two sixes and this six, so I can solve for a six here. These two sixes and this six, let's solve for a six up here. And then with this six and these two sixes, we can solve for a six here and get one last six right here. So we, now we just solved all the nines and we solved all of the sixes. All right, let's see what we can do with the fours. Uh, you're kind of wondering here, can we solve this three, four naked pair? You know, how do we disambiguate this naked pair? And the answer is by looking at the four here in column two. You see how this four comes down? Column two. Well, it leaves a four in just two spots here in block seven. So that makes it another pointing pair. So this is the pointing pair, and the fours have to be somewhere here in block seven. They can't be anywhere else along the row. So that means this can no longer be a four. Once we disambiguate that, we can solve this cell now for a three. This is going to be a four. It's going to be a three. And with this as a four, that's going to be a three. And we make all those solves. Now with these two threes, we can solve for three right here. Awesome. All right. Next thing you want to look at is let's kind of focus here a little bit on column nine. All right. 
You got a one, two, four, and an eight is what's missing here. Well, I got a one, I got a four, and I got an eight right here. So this is a naked single two. So we can solve that for a two. And now with these twos, we know we can displace this sign or two and solve this cell for a two. So we're getting really close. What else can we notice? Well, let's look up here because the solving is going to get a little bit faster. And if you want to get much faster at solving Sudoku, you got to be good at this part where you have more cells filled in than what you have remaining. And so check out my single cell solving methods where I teach you how to find and solve individual cells quickly and to know when you're looking at hidden singles versus naked singles. You look at this four right here and I see this four. There's only one place for four up here in block three. So you got these two fours now means this has to be a four here. You got this pointing pair of four, so I know this is a four, and then that's going to be a five. And now you got a one five remaining here. I don't need to mark it because I already see where the one is. So that's a one, and that's a five. And now we have a full house right here, and so we can solve this cell for an eight. Awesome. And then with this eight, we can solve for an eight right here and disambiguate the seven eight naked pair. So we're cleaning up all those naked pairs. Love it. And now we have two full houses across rows one and two. So I know I can solve both these. The one always sticks out to me first. So I'll solve that first. And then we can solve for the seven. We also have a nice full house here in this block. So we can solve that for one. With these two ones, I can solve for one right here. And with these two ones, now I can solve for one right there. Awesome. Another full house across the bottom. So that's got to be a three. And then with this three, we can solve for a three here. And with this three, we can solve for a three here. And we're just doing some Ross hatching now to kind of get through and make all these solves. I don't see a four in column six, so this has got to be your four. And now with this four, we know we can solve for a four right here, which displaces that Snyder mark. So we saw the four there, and this has got to be a five. I don't see a five up in block four, so that's got to be a five, and this is going to be your two. And then we have two cells remaining. All right. I don't see a two yet, so this has got to be your two, and this is going to be your five. You want more practice with naked pairs? Then check out this video. Please consider supporting me through the Buy Me a Coffee page. And thank you so much for watching.